If you want to learn how to use subordinating conjunctions in German, such as das, weil, ob, or wenn, and more, you have come to the right place. Not only will I explain the word order and sentence structure rules for these subordinating conjunctions, but I will also explain how to use each of the subordinating conjunctions, including als, als ob, before, bis, da, damit, das, eher, falls, in dem, nachdem, ob, gleich, ob schon, obwohl, seit, seitdem, so bald, so das, so lange, so oft, während, weil, wenn, and wohin gegen. Due to the large number of conjunctions in this category, this video will explain each one in broad strokes. If you are struggling with the more subtle differences between certain conjunctions, leave a comment down below about which ones you would like to see grouped together in a video, and I'll make a list of videos that need to be made about these conjunctions based on your comments. First on my list of subordinating conjunctions is als. This conjunction most often translates as when. It can only be used with the past tense, however. This is different than the next conjunction on my list, then, which can be used with the past tense, but most often isn't. Let's take a look at a few examples of how als works in sentences. Ich war schon weg, als meine Mutter nach Hause kam. I was already gone when my mother came home. In this sentence, I used als in the second clause. This clause is called the subordinate clause. That's because we're using a subordinating conjunction. Subordinating conjunctions require clauses that cannot stand on their own. If I say, als meine Mutter nach Hause kam, people will be waiting for the rest of the sentence, as this is not complete. There are two types of clauses that we need to concern ourselves with today. Mr. and Mrs. No, wait, different video. Hauptsatz and Nebensatz. Hauptsatz refers to the clause that could stand on its own. In English, we call this the main clause. In our first example, this would be, ich war schon weg. If the main clause is first, the word order is normal in that clause. The second type of clause is the one that starts with our subordinating conjunction. This is called a Nebensatz, or a subordinate clause in English. This clause will always have the conjugated verb at the end. This does not change anything else about the word order in that clause. All you do is take the verb from its normal spot next to the subject and put it at the end of the clause. In our first example, this is why kam is at the end of als meine Mutter nach Hause kam. So the word order rule number one for subordinating conjunctions such as als is when the Nebensatz, or the subordinate clause, is second, put the conjugated verb at the end of that clause. The word order for the Hauptsatz, or the main clause, is not affected. Word order rule number two is when the Nebensatz is first, put the conjugated verbs of both clauses in the middle of the sentence next to the comma. For example, Als meine Mutter nach Hause kam, war ich schon weg. When my mother came home, I was already gone. Notice that kam and wa are on either side of the comma in the middle of the sentence. This could be described as having the subordinate clause with a verb at the end and a main clause with the verb at the beginning. But I usually just refer to it as a verb cluster around a comma. That's the basics of the word order rules for subordinate clauses. If the subordinate clause is second, the verb in the subordinate clause moves to the end of the sentence. If the subordinate clause is first, the verbs in both clauses are placed next to the comma in the middle of the sentence. Let's go back to some practice examples of als. Als die Schulglocke ertönte, gingen die Schüler nach Hause. When the school bell rang, the students went home. Als das Mädchen das Klavier zum Strand gebracht hat, haben die Strandbesucher gestarrt. When the girl brought the piano to the beach, the beachgoers stared. Die Strandbesucher waren erstaunt, als sie das gesehen haben. The beach visitors were surprised when they saw that. Pinocchio wurde erschreckt, als der Wal ihn verschluckte. Pinocchio was scared when the whale swallowed him. While als can only be used in the past, the conjunction wenn can be used with all of the tenses. If you want to use it with the past, however, you're probably going to need a qualifier before wenn. You should indicate how often it occurred in the past when you use wenn. For example, Immer wenn ich Kekse aß, aß ich sehr viele. Always when I ate cookies, I ate a lot. Jedes Mal, wenn er ein blaues Auto sah, schlug er mich. Every time when he saw a blue car, he hit me. 
Some websites will tell you that wenn is used in four different ways. One, to show a condition, wenn es regnet, spiele ich im Haus, when it rains, I play in the house. Number two, temporal use. Jedes Mal, wenn ich einen Hund sehe, muss ich ihn streicheln. Every time when I see a dog, I have to pet him. Number three, concession. Wenn auch nicht klar ist, was man machen sollte, even if it's not clear what is to be done. Number four, wishes. Wenn ich wüsste, hätte ich etwas anderes gemacht. If I had known, I would have done something different. Most of this is nonsense. The reason you use qualifiers like immer or jedes Mal in front of wenn when it's used in the past tense is that it introduces a condition. This is the only thing it ever does. It cannot have anything to do with the temporal part of the sentence, as this is explained by adverbs and tenses. It doesn't have anything to do with wishes. This part is done by the verbs that are used. It simply introduces a condition. Depending on this condition and whether or not it is met dictates the rest of the sentence. The condition introduction aspect of this conjunction is why then is often translated as if. Let's take a look at a few more examples and examine the true purpose of this conjunction. Immer wenn ich Geburtstag hatte, sah ich meinen Vater. Aber wenn es nicht mein Geburtstag wäre, hätte ich ihn nicht gesehen. Always when I had a birthday, I saw my father. But if it weren't my birthday, I wouldn't see him. Here we have two different uses of this conjunction. Some would say that the first shows the temporal use and the second shows the conditional, meaning that it triggers the subjunctive mood. In reality, both simply introduce a condition. The first condition being that I had a birthday, and the second condition being that it were not my birthday. The use of the subjunctive mood or the lack thereof is not dependent upon the use of the conjunction, but rather whether or not what we want to express is contrary to reality. For more on this, you can see my video about the subjunctive mood linked in the description or in the corner. As for the temporal use of the first clause, it's actually the word imma and the use of the past tense that tells you when this happened. The conjunction simply gives us the condition. A synonym to wenn is falls. Unlike wenn, however, falls cannot be translated as when. It is more closely related to in case. As with wenn, it introduces a condition. Unlike then, it doesn't lend itself very well to Konjunktiv zwei or the subjunctive mood in German. Let's look at a few examples to help you see what I mean. Falls du Hunger hast, gibt es Essen im Kühlschrank. In case you have hunger or are hungry, there is food in the refrigerator. Wenn du Hunger hast, gibt es Essen im Kühlschrank. If you have hunger or are hungry, there is food in the refrigerator. In these sentences, there is practically no difference between wenn and falls. To me, falls draws more attention to the condition than wenn does, but that's about the only difference between them. Wir haben ein Babyphone im Kinderzimmer, falls das Baby aufwacht. We have a baby monitor in the nursery in case the baby wakes up. Wir haben ein Babyphone im Kinderzimmer, wenn das Baby aufwacht. We have a baby monitor in the nursery if the baby wakes up. This time there is a bigger difference. When we use falls, it indicated that the baby monitor was always there, so that on the occasion that the baby wakes up, we would hear it. In the sentence with wenn, it indicates that we would own a baby phone if the baby wakes up. As long as the baby is asleep, there is no baby phone. If the baby wakes up, suddenly there's a baby phone. Seems counterproductive. To be fair, most people would interpret wenn as the same as falls in this instance, as putting the baby monitor in the room after the baby wakes up would be dumb. But it would be much better to simply use falls in this instance so that there is no confusion. Here are some more examples of falls. Falls meine Mutter anruft, bin ich nicht zu Hause. In case my mother calls, I'm not at home. Ich habe einen Leibwächter, falls ich Carol Baskin treffe. I have a bodyguard in case I meet Carol Baskin. Next up is another conjunction that translates as if. This conjunction is old, but unlike the flexibility that is allowed by wenn, this conjunction can only be used with yes-no type of phrases. This does not mean that the answers that you can use are only yes or no, but that there are only a clear set of options. For example, Meine Mutter will wissen, ob du bis zum Abendessen bleibst. My mother wants to know if you will stay for dinner. This sentence doesn't include yes or no, but the response to it does. Ja, ich bleibe. Yes, I'm staying. Nein, ich bleibe nicht. No, I'm not staying. 
Ob er wirklich ein Pilot ist, wissen wir nicht. If he is really a pilot, we don't know. Again, we have two options for the response. Ja, er ist Pilot. Yes, he is a pilot. Nein, er ist kein Pilot. No, he is not a pilot. As was shown in the last example, we don't actually need to know the answer and we don't need to list both options in order to use OB. If the second option isn't just a negated version of the first option, however, you do need to include it in the sentence. For example, wir haben uns noch nicht entschieden, ob wir ins Kino oder zum Abendessen gehen. We haven't yet decided if we are going to the movies or to dinner. It doesn't have to be limited to just two options, you can also add more. Wir haben uns noch nicht entschieden, ob wir ins Kino, nach Hause oder zum Abendessen gehen. We haven't decided yet if we are going to the movies, home or dinner. Although ob means if, it is not interchangeable with wenn or falls. For instance, Ich habe ihn gefragt, ob er mitkommt. I asked him if he is coming along. Ich habe ihn gefragt, falls er mitkommt. I asked him in case he is coming along. The first one indicates that we simply asked if he was coming along or not. The second option says that we asked him the question, but it was somehow dependent upon him coming along. For instance, if he were in a group of others, some of whom were going to the beach, but you weren't sure which ones, you could ask the entire group, whatever the question was, just in case some of them went and you needed the answer to your question. If you were to use wenn in that sentence, it would be a bit difficult, as it would indicate that the act has already been done sometime in the future when the condition has been met and then you asked. Anyway, the point is, ob, falls, and wenn are not interchangeable. To bring it all full circle, there is also als ob, which combines the first conjunction I explained, als, and ob, which I just explained. When I showed you the examples of als earlier, I left out that you could also translate als as as. For example, als meine Mutter nach Hause kam, war ich schon weg. As my mother came home, I was already gone. With this in mind, you can see how als ob is used. It's used with the condition created by ob and the time indicated by als. This puts them together to form as if. This makes it so you assume the condition set up by ob was met. For example, er küsst sie als ob er sie liebt. He kisses her as if he loves her. Er tanzt wild herum, als ob seine Hose brennt. He dances wildly about, as if his pants were on fire. Er legt mir Handschellen an, als ob ich ein Verbrecher wäre. He cuffed me, or put handcuffs on me, as if I were a criminal. As you can see, contrary to what some believe, you can use als ob with or without the Konjunktiv 2 or subjunctive mood in German. If you really want to know how to use Konjunktiv 2, check out the link in the description that I mentioned earlier. Ob is also used at the beginning of other conjunctions. There are three of these, ob gleich, ob schon, and ob wohl. Most German learners will only be familiar with ob wohl, as ob gleich and ob schon aren't as widely used. The meaning is exactly the same, no matter what. I would personally recommend that you simply learn how to use ob wohl and just keep in the back of your mind that ob gleich and ob schon are just archaic ways of saying the same thing. All of them just mean although. Here are a few examples. Obwohl DC Comics bessere Figuren hat, macht Marvel bessere Filme. Although DC Comics has better characters, Marvel makes better films. Batman wird in Filmen nur als Rowling dargestellt, obwohl er höchst intelligent ist. Batman is portrayed only as a brute in films, although he is highly intelligent. Obwohl der Schlüssel in das Türschloss passt, kann ich die Tür nicht öffnen. Although the key fits into the door lock, I can't open the door. The conjunction weil is one of the most popular German subordinating conjunctions as it means because. It is used mostly like the English word, but obviously it changes the word order as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It is more common to use weil in the second clause, but it is acceptable to use it as the first clause in a sentence, even though it is not okay for you to use because at the beginning of an English sentence. Ich werde dick, weil ich zu viele Kekse esse. I'm getting fat because I eat too many cookies. Ich halte 1,5 Meter Abstand, weil ich andere Menschen meiden möchte. Covid-19 ist nur eine Ausrede dafür. I keep 1.5 meters away because I want to avoid other people. Covid-19 is just an excuse for that. Weil ich kein Geld habe, kaufe ich keine Videospiele. Because I don't have any money, 
I don't buy any video games. Another word that means because is da. This one is considered slightly more formal than vile is, and is more common to see this one in the first clause of a sentence rather than vile. Other than those two slight differences, vile and da are pretty much interchangeable. If you find yourself unsure which you should use, vile or da, you should probably use da as is the more formal of the two. Personally, however, I use vile much more often than I use da as I don't find myself in a lot of formal discussions in German and I'm usually just talking amongst friends and vile just seems to feel right. Here are a few examples with da. Da Elsa den Fjord zugefroren hat, musste Anna sie finden. Because Elsa froze the fjord, Anna had to find her. Da mein Computer kaputt ist, möchte ich einen neuen kaufen. Because my computer is broken, I would like to buy a new one. Ich habe keinen Computer gekauft, da ich kein Geld habe. I didn't buy a computer because I don't have any money. While both weil and da explain the reason or the cause for some action, da mit introduces a clause that shows why something is done. It's similar to so that or in order to in English. And if you giggled when I said damit, you are exactly the kind of viewer that I'm looking for. Check out these examples with damit. Damit ich nicht auf die Toilette im Bahnhof muss, trinke ich nur einen Kaffee am Morgen. So that I don't have to go to the bathroom in the train station, I only drink one coffee in the morning. Sie wacht sehr früh auf, damit sie etwas Arbeit erledigen kann. She wakes up very early so she can get some work done. Ich trage eine Fliege, damit ich cool aussehe. I wear a bow tie so that I look cool. A confusing conjunction even for native speakers is das. The reason it's confusing is because the definite article das and the relative pronoun that is based off of that article also exist. When speaking, you can barely tell a difference between das and das. Technically, das has two s's and a short vowel sound, while das has a long vowel sound and one s. In practice, the difference is negligible. When writing, however, the difference is an important one to make, as they mean different things. Das means that, while das means that. See? Totally different, not confusing at all. The easy version is that das, with one s, refers back to a noun, while das, with two s's, does not. You can replace das, with one s, with dieses, jenes, or welches, and it would still make sense. If one of those words doesn't work, you need two S's. Honestly, you'll find that only people who are overly pedantic care whether you have two S's or just one. Those people include teachers, grammar nerds, and people who are feverishly writing in the comments right now to prove me wrong. Here are a few examples with both so you understand the difference anyway. Mein Bruder sagt, dass er ein neues Auto gekauft hat. My brother says that he bought a new car. In this sentence, das isn't referring to some neuter noun. It's introducing a clause that gives more information about the action from the first clause, namely, what my brother said. Das ist das Auto, das mein Bruder gekauft hat. This is the car that my brother bought. In this sentence, das refers back to das Auto, which is a neuter noun, which is why we chose this version with only one S. Mein Bruder sagt, dass er das Auto gekauft hat, das mein Vater einmal besaß. My brother says that he bought the car that my father once owned. This time I used both das and das. The first one indicates more information about the first clause, which means that we used das with two s's. The second one refers back to das Auto, which is why we use das with only one s for that one. Ich denke, dass das ganz einfach ist. I think that this is quite simple. The first das adds more information to the first clause, so we use two s's. The second das does not refer to something specific this time, which is why we chose the neuter article to begin with, but it only has one s as it's referring to something, namely, whatever it is that is quite simple. Now that you kind of understand what the difference between das and das is, here's one more example that is sure to confuse you. Weißt du das, dass das 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 meist verwendete Wort in diesem Satz ist? Did you know that the the is the most used word in this sentence? Along the same lines as damit is so das. It literally is the German equivalent of so that, and is used basically the same way. An alternative translation would be so as. It's very similar to the conjunction damit. Again, don't forget that the word order changes based on where so das is used. Ich kaufe jede Woche Kekse, so dass es immer einige zu Hause gibt. I buy cookies every week so that there are always some at home. 
Der Mobber brüllt den Jungen an, so dass er weint. The bully yells at the boy, so that he cries. Das Mädchen hilft dem Jungen, so dass sie ihn beruhigt. The girl helps the boy, so as to comfort him. The girl helps the boy, so that she comforts him. If you use dadurch in the main clause and das to connect the subordinate clause, it means the same thing as the subordinating conjunction in dem. Both of these mean something like by means of. You will often see them translated as while, but the translation doesn't really encompass what's really going on. For example, Man kann sehr viel Deutsch dadurch lernen, dass man Videos von Herrn Antrum schaut. One can learn a lot of German while watching videos from Herr Antrum. Man kann sehr viel Deutsch lernen, indem man Videos von Herrn Antrum schaut. One can learn a lot of German while watching videos from Herr Antrum. In both of these sentences, you could translate da durch das and in dem with while, but the true meaning is more like by means of, as it shows the way in which you do something via the conjunction. It shows the medium through which the action takes place. Here are a few more examples with da durch das and in dem. Er hat sehr viel abgenommen, indem er jeden Tag drei Kilometer rennt. He has lost a lot of weight by running three kilometers every day. Er hat sehr viel dadurch abgenommen, dass er jeden Tag drei Kilometer rennt. He has lost a lot of weight by running three kilometers every day. Another subordinating conjunction that is often translated as while is wohin gegen. This is used to express a juxtaposition of the two clauses. This action in the first clause does this, while this action in the second clause does that. As you can see, you can use here while, that being said, you could also use whereas. This avoids the ambiguity of having too many conjunctions that all mean while. Let's try a few examples of wohin gegen. Ich habe zwei Kinder und bin seit 2010 verheiratet. Wohin gegen mein Bruder drei Kinder hat und seit 2019 geschieden ist. I have two children and have been married since 2010, whereas my brother has three children and has been divorced since 2019. Das Kind auf der rechten Seite hat nur einen Keks, wohingegen das Kind auf der linken Seite schon 15 gegessen hat. The child on the right side has only one cookie whereas the child on the left side has already eaten 15. Elche tragen ein großes, schweres Geweih, wohingegen Rehböcke ein kleines und leichtes Geweih haben. Elk have large, heavy antlers, while deer, or stags, have small, light antlers. The rest of the conjunctions for today all have to do with time. Don't confuse the fact that I just said the rest of the conjunctions with we're almost done here, hooray! There are 12 of them. Some are more used than others, so let's just start with the easy stuff, the befores. There are two subordinating conjunctions in German that mean before. There's the easy one, before, which is the same as the English version, and then there's ea, which also has an English equivalent, but it's just as unused as ea. The word is er. Anyway, let's look at some examples to see what I'm talking about. Der Mann trinkt noch ein Glas Wein, bevor er nach Hause geht. The man drinks another glass of wine before he goes home. Before er ins Bett geht, putzt er sich die Zähne. Before he goes to bed, he brushes his teeth. Meine Hündin dreht sich im Kreis, bevor sie sich hinlegt. My dog walks in a circle before she lays down. These three examples are pretty simple and straightforward. They are normal sentences. That's because before is just like the English before, but it's only used as a conjunction. When you use the English before with a noun, you need for in German. When you use it on its own, you need davor or vorher in German. The other one, ea, is archaic or at the very least uncommon. You can use ea anywhere that you can use before, just don't. Unless you're a fedora-wearing, neckbeard-having basement dweller who tips their hat when passing a woman on the street and greets them with milady, you don't need ea. You should be aware of its existence, however, so you can recognize when it shows up in fairy tales and other stuff like that. Here are a few examples of Ea. Aschenputtel musste nach Hause, ehe ihre Kutsche wieder ein Kürbis wurde. Cinderella had to go home, ere her carriage became a pumpkin again. 
Der, wer die Brücke des Todes überqueren möchte, muss die drei Fragen beantworten, ehe er die andere Seite sieht. He who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three, ere the other side he see. This is not the actual movie quote in the German version, as it doesn't use Ea in the actual German version of the film, for the sake of the rhyme. Here's the real German version. Wer über die Brücke des Todes will gehen, der muss dreimal Rede und Antwort stehen. Dann darf er die andere Seite sehen. He who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three, ere the other side he see. While before and ea both talk about the time before something occurs, the conjunction bis expresses the time before and leading up to the occurrence. The translation is until. Here are a few examples of it in action. Ich werde dich lieben, bis das letzte Sternchen ausgeht. I will love you until the last star goes out. Bis er sein Geld bekommt, hört er nicht auf, dir zu folgen. Until he gets his money, he will not stop following you. Er kann kaum abwarten, bis er sie wieder sieht. He can hardly wait until he sees her again. Quick side note here, notice that we put wieder and sehen back together at the end of the sentence. Normally, wieder sehen would have been split because it's a separable prefix, but since we're using this at the end of a sentence with a subordinate clause, we're using this here as wieder sieht, together, but still conjugated. When you want to use while in the traditional sense, not the other ways that I've already mentioned in this video, you need während. Yes, this is another one that doubles as a genitive preposition. Again, the easy way to tell if this is a preposition or a conjunction is where it's located within the sentence and what words are around it. If there is a noun attached to während, you are working with a preposition, and that noun should be in the genitive case. If you have what is essentially an entire sentence with a verb at the end, you're working with a conjunction. Here are a few examples of während as a conjunction. Während mein Bruder schläft, rasiere ich ihm die Haare. While my brother is sleeping, I shave his hair. Was hast du gemacht, während ich den ganzen Haushalt erledigt habe? What did you do while I did all of the housework? Das Börse triumphiert, während gute Menschen nichts tun. Evil triumphs when good men do nothing. So lange translates as as long as, but it could be another word that means while. It works in the same way that the English does as well. Just keep in mind that if you can't say as long as when you say while, you need one of the other conjunctions that I've mentioned previously in this video. Here are a few examples of so lange. So lange ich meinen Kaffee bekomme, wird niemand verletzt werden. As long as I get my coffee, no one will get hurt. Der Tiger ist ganz nett. So lange Don nicht mit ihm im Käfig ist. The tiger is quite nice, so long as Don isn't in the cage with him. Diese Tür können Sie für 30 Euro kaufen, so lange sie auf Lager ist. You can buy this door for 30 euros, as long as it is still in stock. If you need a way to say as soon as in German, use the subordinating conjunction so bald. Here are a few examples of that. So bald ich zu Hause bin, nehme ich die Fliege ab. As soon as I am at home, I take off the bow tie. Die Gottesanbeterin frisst ihren Partner, sobald die Paarung zu Ende ist. The praying mantis eats her partner as soon as the mating is over. This is actually sort of a myth. They're simply cannibals. They eat each other all the time. Males eat other males, or they'll eat females. Females will eat either males or females. It doesn't really matter. When it happens isn't even that important either. Sometimes they'll eat each other while still mating. The more you know. Sobald er sein Gehalt bekommt, gibt er es aus. As soon as he gets his paycheck, he spends it. You can use so oft to mean as often as or whenever. Pro tip, it isn't zooft or zoft or soft or any of those other pronunciation errors that you are trying. The correct pronunciation is two completely separate, different-sounding O's. The first one is a long O in so. The second one is a short O in oft. While Duden officially lists this as one word, it does show that it can be written as two words in their example sentences. There is nothing wrong with writing it as two words, so oft. Here are a few examples of so oft in action. So oft ich Geld bekomme, wird etwas in meinem Haus kaputt. As often as I get money, something in my house breaks. Der Priester hilft seinen Pfarrangehörigen, 
so oft sie Hilfe benötigen. The priest helps his parishioners as often as they need help. So oft ich ins Haus trete, ist mein Hund froh, mich zu sehen. As often as I step into the house, my dog is happy to see me. You may be familiar with the preposition nach, which means after, but do you know how to use nachdem? This is a conjunction version of after, and it's similar to its construction of in dem or trotzdem, and the one that we haven't talked about yet, seitdem. Grammar nerd side note, this probably has something to do with the way that German evolved over time. Since seit, nach, and trotz all are prepositions, they generally are followed by nouns. Most of the nouns are going to be either masculine or neuter, which in the dative case is dem. Over time, this article became attached to the preposition in order to form the conjunctions that we now know and love. And much to your German teacher's dismay, this also means that trotz is and was often used with the dative case instead of the genitive case that is shown in your textbook, and in videos on this very YouTube channel. With that out of the way, here are some examples with nachdem. Nachdem ich meinen Regenschirm zu Hause gelassen habe, regnete es. After I left my umbrella at home, it rained. Meine Schüler dürfen zocken, nachdem sie ihre Hausaufgaben gemacht haben. My students can play video games after they have done their homework. Nachdem du dieses Video gesehen hast, solltest du ein paar von den Konjunktionen in Sätzen in die Kommentare schreiben. After you have watched this video, you should write a few of the conjunctions in sentences in the comments. The last conjunction for this video is actually two. They mean the same thing and can be used interchangeably, however, so they're basically still just one. Also, one of them is infinitely more common than the other, so there's that too. Seit and seitdem. Most of the time, seit is a preposition, whereas seitdem is the one that's often used as a conjunction. However, you can use seit as a conjunction and seitdem as an adverb. When seit is a preposition, it's followed by a noun or a pronoun in the dative case. When seitdem is used as an adverb, it is simply used like any other time element within the sentence. It acts alone and goes either before the direct object or before any of the other adverbs and prepositional phrases. When either of them are used as a conjunction, they introduce a clause and connect it to another one. Since the meaning doesn't change no matter which one of these you use, I'll just use the same examples for both. Just keep in mind that seitdem is much, much more common. Seitdem mein Hund gestorben ist, bin ich traurig, wenn ich immer noch seine Haare im Haus finde. Since my dog died, I am sad when I still find his hair in my house. Yep, you can use more than one subordinating conjunction in a single sentence, and you can make both of them use different versions of the word order rules that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The first part uses the subordinating conjunction first, which pushes the conjugated verbs to the middle by the comma. The second part introduces another clause with another subordinating conjunction, which pushes the conjugated verb in that clause to the end of the clause. There is a lot going on in that sentence. Seitdem du weg bist, kann ich zum ersten Mal durchatmen. Since you've been gone, I can breathe for the first time. Seit du weg bist, kann ich zum ersten Mal durchatmen. Since you've been gone, I can breathe for the first time. Dieses Lied bleibt in seiner Erinnerung, seitdem er es zum ersten Mal gehört hat. This song stays in his memory since he first heard it. Wow! Congratulations! You made it to the end of the video! Give yourself a pat on the back. If you're a glutton for punishment, you can practice what you've learned in this video with a worksheet from my website, germanwithantrum.com. There is a link for that in the description. If you have questions about these conjunctions, or you simply want to apply what you've learned, you can do that in the comments down below. Das ist alles für heute. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!